Hi, folks. Thank you very much for joining us today. Welcome to this month's Office Hours with uh, me, your host, Laura Jarkovsky, uh, Joe, our developer advocate, and Roman Grisham, our CTO here at Dragonfly. But a big shout out to Fabiano this morning, who's actually joining us as our top contributor of the month in March. And he'll be joining us later on today in the, in the call to go through some of the stuff that he's been working on in Dragonfly and how he got involved in Dragonfly. So thank you very much for joining us today. It's our first time using StreamYard. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat beside you. I'll be keeping an eye out on it and I will be able to answer any questions that you may have. So, um, as I mentioned, like this month, we're gonna go through what's actually happening in the Dragonfly developer community, and many of the new initiatives that we're rolling out. Um, and then uh, Roman is gonna talk us through some of the latest new features. Um, you might've recently read one of our blog posts that Joe has written on the Bloom filters. And then we're going to hear from Fabiano about some of the work that he's been doing um, alongside and working with Dragonfly. And hopefully, if you have any questions, as I mentioned, just let us know here in the chat or alternatively join us on Discord after this call and we can talk to you there. So first of all, great news. Uh, Dragonfly has been nominated in one of the categories for best in-memory solution for the Database Trends and Applications Award. So we do need you, our community, to help us reach that goal. And we'd love your vote if you could vote for us. Uh, if you follow that link to the DBTA uh, awards uh, and vote for us in the best in-memory solution. The awards close on June 3rd for voting. So we'd love to have you if you possibly could share the love that you like for Dragonfly and we'd appreciate your votes. Thank you. Um, one of our new initiatives that you may have seen either on LinkedIn or on Discord, we'd love for you all to have a Dragonfly sticker on your laptop, on your phone, on your water bottle. So to get your chance at one of these unique stickers, sheets, simply download and install Dragonfly, uh, run the CLI and grab a screenshot of it. And if you fill in the form and submit it at that URL, I'll get a notification of it and I will put it in the post. Like I have today's current lots of to go to the post office with the first lot of sticker sheets being sent out to our community. And I'm sure you'd all like to have a sticker on your laptop at the next conference that you go to um, to showcase the Dragonfly community. So over to Joe. Yeah, thank you, Laura. Um, hey, folks, I'm Joe. Um, yeah, glad, glad to see you all again. So yeah, this month we have our top um, community contributor who is uh, Zahaya um, Hating. And uh, he's a long-term community contributor, actually, uh, back in 2022. Uh, he has contributed to the Prometheus metrics support. Uh, which is one of the reasons, uh, you know, how, why, you know, Dragonfly, we can, we can export, uh, we can expose uh, Prometheus uh, metrics. Uh, yeah. And uh, recently, uh, we have more contributions from him about uh, improving the benchmark uh, test, specifically in the Kubernetes environment. So, yeah, um, you know, thank you so much. And uh, as you can see, like, it's uh, like the big and smaller pieces like this, which makes uh, open source a great community, which makes Dragonfly a great community. And uh, thank you so much and congratulations as the uh, May um, top, community, top community contributor. Um, next up, we have, uh, yeah, as we mentioned uh, earlier, uh, we, we are bringing back uh, Fabiano Huda, who is the uh, top community contributor of March. And uh, it's uh, very, actually Fabiano is uh, on vacation right now. So it's uh, our great pleasure to have Fabiano over here. And uh, just to uh, recap, uh, Fabiano has contributed to Dragonfly, you know, more specifically about the uh, Helm chart uh, improvements, right? And uh, yeah, as you can see, um, Dragonfly is uh, gaining uh, tensions and we have like more uh, community users and contributors, uh, you know, every day. So yeah, uh, which is uh, which is awesome. Uh, Fabiano, uh, welcome to, to, to join us. Like, uh, why don't you give us uh, probably a brief introduction of yourself. Sure. Uh, thank you very much, Joy. Thank you very much, uh, all of you, uh, for having me here today. Um, yeah, so I've been working as a software engineer as my main background for the uh, last 20 years. Um, I've been working with uh, embedded systems, C++, um, um, cloud computer applications, and backend systems. And um, since you're working with um, um, in memory um, details, um, when you're working with C++, I've always been um, interesting software that has um, good performance and perform well, uh, doing the best job that we can use um, 
also on our uh, as a, our resources foundation to our platform. And at Brahma, um, we do uh, cryptocurrencies uh, um, projects. So uh, we are very focused on um, um, improve the people use um, transactions and perform transactions on um, on chain um, uh, web tree protocols. And um, over there, we also have needs to use e-memory databases. So um, I've been looking for good e-memory databases in 2023, January 2023, was my first contact um, to um, Dragonfly. And that moment, Dragonfly um, was not attending me um, as uh, because the uh, requirements of um, um, authentication and as RCL comments and over um, less than one year, Dragonfly has improved a lot and then has delivered a lot of features at once. And then I came back and look at the Dragonfly DB project and say, okay, now it's time to take a look more deeper and put in our um, environment and see how it's behavior. And that was a very um, amazing experience. It was very straightforward. Things just um, work smoothly. And the community and Roman and other um, components of the team also helped me a lot, um, very That's fast. Fun. Yeah. And tell me, like, what was the biggest feature that made you the most excited about using Dragonfly? What was the feature that really made you like Dragonfly the most and be willing to take that next level of step of integration? Yeah, it was the speed, right? Yeah. So, speed is quite a lot and <clears throat> and have these um, internal running the same network and all the requirements for our secure now is cover um, with um, ACL and uh, <clears throat> authentication and yeah, everything working well um, in our Kubernetes clusters. Sounds great. Uh, Fabiano, maybe I didn't uh, capture this real, but uh, so before you started to use Dragonfly, were you on Redis already, like your workloads? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Dragonfly was something like um, how to improve what is already good, right? So we had um, Redis in the past, um, <clears throat> managed Redis, and was running smoothly, et cetera. But then when we got Dragonfly, yeah, we can go. Lower lattices, we can uh, lower responses and better throughput. And yeah, that was a good transition to move to ground line. Fabiano, what, uh, mm -hmm. what pushed you to search for alternatives? What was the pain point when managing the Redis? Um, Redis has a very nice documentation, and um, there was no um, real pain points, uh, maybe uh, because I was using managed Redis on AWS. Mm. And then I would like something more uh, close to me and more flexible to manage on the cluster, strictly on a cluster. cluster. Mm. Um, then to manage uh, the networks between the Redis cache, because when you deploy managed Redis cache, it goes to the your VPC, but not inside that same network of uh, Kubernetes. And then I would like something inside of a uh, um, Kubernetes networks. Okay, I see. So basically, the the flexibility of deployment, and you really search for self-hosted solution that would mm -hmm. be easy to manage. Yes. And what was the reason that you didn't use just a Redis container within your Kubernetes deployment? Why did you have a managed solution in the first place? Um, initially, um, there was an initial conversation on team. So let's set all the extra and 30 party resources um, to manage services on um, AWS. And then a couple of them, we just uh, started to reviewing and say, okay, this is one can still be managed and we can still use it um, because of facilitation um, of backups. So for example, databases. Um, but then we decided to move Redis to another um, point. Mm. Then move to uh, from managed to um, self managed. Okay. Um, do you think that uh, using uh, a Dragonfly in your Kubernetes uh, brings you uh, some uh, benefits versus uh, using other technologies in your Kubernetes uh, cluster, other alternative <laughs> in memory stores? I mean, what do yeah, you? Where do you see the advantages of Dragonfly for you, for your use case? 
uh, for me because I can support that of Dragonfly just in one um, managed node group. Mm -hmm. And this managed node group can be only one machine. And then I can start to um, scale these machines up vertically. So I can change the instance type and just increase more memory and increase more CPU. And then uh, Dragonfly can scale on vertically on that one machine. And that's also give me a lot of faci facilities to um, operations. OK. So uh, simplified management, uh, easy to uh, to do operations, uh, and the vertical scale. And indeed, yeah. our, our first uh, adopters uh, almost two years ago were uh, even not the cloud users, but self-hosting uh, companies. Maybe they're running on the data centers. And they really appreciated the simplicity of a Dragonfly deployments, where you don't need to have Redis cluster and you can have a, put everything on a single machine. So basically, in, in a way, even though that you run uh, on the cloud, you kind of benefit from the same uh, simplicity uh, uh, properties. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Cool. And thank you very much for contributing. By the way, it was uh, really nice. Yeah, it was um, very straightforward. I really recommend all people that are using Dragonfly that wants also to understand better internals and things like this and mm -hmm. see there is space for contribution to it. Uh, people are very um, fast in the answer and friendly and also simulate you to make a uh, good contribution there. And it's very good and a pleasure. That's so kind of you to play. I really appreciate that. And your, your T-shirt hasn't arrived in time, but we have a top yeah. contributor t shirt being sent to you. So thank you. And I'll also get some stickers on IT as well. But going forward, like, is there, I think, what, what is the one feature that you would like to see next? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but if you could have a wish list of features mm -hmm. that you would like to see, now is the time to say it before we can capture this information for Roman. But what would yeah. be the next thing that you would like to see in, inside Dragonfly for you to continue using it? Yeah, actually, um, um, some operational side. When I try to, for example, execute uh, SCL commands and other uh, interfaces command, heads as well has the same um, um, way of doing. But I don't, for um, um, automation, that's to be easier to have um, maybe web interface like REST API to um, manage and administrate the, the uh, okay. Dragonfly. And it's going to be too, and easier to access outside the uh, the pod and cut the uh, needs to use a red CLI mm -hmm. um, and get free of this and maybe it'll be uh, easier to, to automate stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a good suggestion. Uh, and uh, I think we'll uh, follow up on this uh, relatively soon. So I hope yeah. nice things, nice improvements uh, are coming your way in the in the coming months in the ux improvements and etc yeah. thank you very much thank you Fabiana. thank you appreciate it and uh yeah um if you ever think oh sorry Roman. Uh, one more question actually Fabiana. Yeah. what kind of apis uh, do you uh, if you remember what kind of apis do you use in your workflows is it uh, strings or hash maps or sets or uh right now we are using strings um and probably okay. json later on Okay. okay. Ah, yes. Yeah, so my point is, like, if you have any other feedback, and again, through our community, if you have other suggestions, please either pop it into the Discord channel, like, have a create a thread, tag in Roman, myself, Joe, any of the engineers will happily engage with you. We can also have that information put into a GitHub issue for us to track, because the more times we get this feedback, the more times we can actually put that on our roadmap for future development. And as you can see, PRs are definitely appreciated and welcomed. And uh, we'd love to have more community involvement. So if you have any other ideas, please do let us know. So thank you, uh, Fabiano, again for, for joining us today. And, uh, and I'll hand back over to, to Joe, uh, to Roman, sorry, to talk us through the next set of feature development that he's just yeah, pushed out and uh, go from there. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, yep, so I'm always happy to share our recent uh, advancements in Dragonfly with our community. And um, truth be told, we spent our last quarter um, in improving Dragonfly, its reliability and robustness. Uh, and I really hope uh, that uh, our users will appreciate um, these uh, improvements. Uh, for those who didn't update 
uh, Dragonfly to the latest version, I warmly suggest to do so. Um, Dragonfly from several months ago and Dragonfly today is a totally different thing in terms of um, stability. But we also continue listening to our users' uh, feature requests. And two interesting examples of this are the long-standing request for Bloomfilter CPI and also the HTTP API that was uh, recently introduced. And uh, I'd like to start with uh, Bloom filters. Um, for those who do not know, Bloom filters are space efficient probabilistic data structures that are used to test uh, whether an element exists uh, in a set. And uh, in Dragonfly, we expose, let's say, uh, two operations, BF add and BF exists. Uh, BF, add, uh, BF add adds an element to the set. BF exist checks for uh, its existence. Um, and um, BFAD is pretty straightforward. It's uh, like a regular set. It just adds an element. But with BF exists, um, if it returns one, um, so usually with sets, it, mean, it means that uh, the element is in the set. Uh, since Bloom filters are probabilistic, uh, it means that most likely the element is in a set. And uh, the element here is uh, just an arbitrary string that you can add or check for its existence. Um, in case BF exists, uh, return zero, it's a actually precise answer. That means that this element has never been added to the set. And uh, why um, this data structure exists? Why do we have ambiguous uh, answers? So uh, the, the reason why Bloom filters exist, they are much more space, space efficient than uh, classical sets. Um, and uh, basically, um, they are useful as the name suggests, is to filter out irrelevant traffic or query traffic towards your maybe more expensive and less efficient uh, server. So suppose you have a PostgreSQL database or a cloud storage, and um, you, uh, you want to filter out queries that uh, return zero results in case you have like a relatively high miss rate in your query traffic, so you can put or manage a Bloom filter on Dragonfly for every element that you add to your expensive storage, you also add it to the uh, Bloom filter set. And before you query your expensive storage, you query a Dragonfly set, Bloom filter set, and then in case it returns a positive answer, then you go and proceed with your, your uh, slower storage. This way you may filter out 99% um, of irrelevant queries and to have a very high Heat rate and reduce the CPU load uh, on your expensive storage. And this is how usually Bloom filters are used. They're used in databases uh, applications. They're also used in crypto world. Um, there are many use, use cases for them. It has been a long standing request from more than a year ago. And uh, finally, we had time and capacity to follow up on this. Uh, that's about uh, Bloom filters. Um, another feature that we implemented uh, is. Um, an HTTP API, and uh, there we uh, basically it, it, it started as a random discussion on Discord where a user uh, asked, uh, "Hey guys, are you supporting HTTP API?" And Dragonfly is designed to be a backend uh, that answers uh, either REST protocol or Memcached protocol. So basically, it, it's not a your regular web server. Uh, so I kind of got curious why would someone need such a thing um, and then the discussion evolved and apparently uh, there are communities uh, that specifically it was a Cloudflare community that they uh, develop uh, applications on the edge and they need a persistent store uh, and to offload uh, the state of their application somewhere and their options uh, kind of limited to what let's say in Cloudflare they suggest uh, provide or some other providers, but those options are limited and sometimes they can be very expensive. So uh, this specific user was looking for alternatives and it sound, sounded like a real pain point. So we went and implemented a very simple uh, API. We'll see it in a second. And uh, we can expose or enable this API via a special flag, which is called Expose HTTP API. Um, so here, yeah, we have an example of how uh, Bloom filters work. Um, so we can you can call BF add again. A filter is just 
as usual in Dragonfly and uh, in Redis, it uh, represents a data structure. So you can have multiple Bloom filters in your um, Dragonfly store, of course. And user one, in this case, is an element. It can be an arbitrary string. And BF exists returns one or zero. And one, as I said, is probabilistic. It's most likely this element exists in a set, but with small uh, probability, it can return false positive. So it returns one, but in fact, uh, this element has never been added to the set. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention um, that classical Bloom filters, they expect uh, that they will be kind of resized in advance that with the expected number of elements in your single source of truth. So for example, if you have a, a, a data store with 1 billion elements, you kind of need to pre-recreate recreate or to set up your Bloom filter and provide this expected size of, uh, let's say, 1 billion of elements. Um, Dragonfly implements a variation of Bloom filters in a bit more advanced version based on the uh, algorithm uh, developed in 2007. Uh, it's called Scalable Bloom Filters, and they provide the ability to auto-resize or to grow dynamically, and that's what we implement here. So it simplifies things. Uh, having said that, if, uh, let's say, memory efficiency is important uh, to you and uh, like uh, the margin of error of probability of the error is also very important to you. I still advise to pre-recreate a Bloom filter in advance with expect a number of elements because this algorithm is a it's a trade-off and sometimes it can lose inefficiency. Um, I don't want to deep dive uh, too much into Bloom filters, uh, uh, but some call it uh, magical data structures. I uh, I think uh, I agree. Uh, probabilistic data structures are really uh, magical ones. And here. Uh, we have an example of an HTTP API, really straightforward. A, a user provides a, or sends a post HTTP request to a backend to Dragonfly, where the command, the Redis command, is uh, described as a JSON array. And uh, Dragonfly responds with a JSON response, uh, uh, which is a result and the value of the response. Sometimes it's a string, sometimes an, an array uh, as well. So. Uh, basically, uh, these are two features that we recently implemented. Uh, but again, we had like numerous uh, smaller features and numerous bug fixes uh, that we fixed along uh, during the last few months. Um, I don't know uh, if we have still have more time, but I would love to demo something. I'm just really excited about something that we are uh, recently working on. Uh, Laura, do we have time? Yeah, we still have time room. Yeah, we're, we're, we're waiting for your demo. That's correct. Uh, yeah, so Dragonfly was uh, invented and designed with a mission of to unlock uh, hardware uh, potential and to have software that uh, doesn't become a, a barrier between uh, in-memory store users and their hardware. So at first we started with multiple CPUs. Uh, and unlocked the vertical scale uh, of the underlying hardware. And many users uh, like Fabiano uh, were able to benefit from the vertical scale of Dragonfly. We also implemented lots of optimizations with memory efficiency. Um, so for many use cases, Dragonfly is 40% more efficient in memory usage, sometimes even more. Um, and it's really great. But we the ultimate goal, I think, which has uh, I, I, I don't know if anyone achieved this, it's kind of to provide a memory store that is able to blend SSD storage, which is quite fast these days, and memory in a unified interface where you still have very high throughput uh, backend with very uh, low latency and you can benefit from much more cost-effective uh, solution where you use SSD uh, as a storage for your uh, database. Uh, and again, it's really important that your latency will still be sub millisecond and your throughput will still be of orders of uh, hundreds of thousands of requests per second. Uh, and that's what we've been working on uh, for the last, actually for many months uh, on the background. And, and I would like to kind of demonstrate uh, what we have. Yeah, so currently I have uh, on my laptop, which is very average laptop with a very 
average SSD. I have a Dragonfly running uh, in the background. Uh, it's been running in in memory store without any SSD. And what I did, I filled it with data, with data by running memtier benchmark, which is a very standard load test program to load uh, either memcached or uh, Dragonfly. So I run it, uh, and um, on my laptop, run it locally. Uh, it achieves 300,000 queries per second. It's all writes, write traffic. Um, I have also a Grafana dashboard to, to show uh, the memory usage of this uh, backend. Let me just refresh it. Okay, so it's more than 20 gigabytes of used memory currently on Dragonfly. Um, and I can show how much items do we, we have here. Uh, DB size. So we have more than uh, 21 million of items. Each item is uh, exactly 1,000 uh, bytes uh, of length, just random data of strings, OK? That's our baseline. That's what all our users currently use in Dragonfly when they write strings. Um, the latency of my benchmark, like P99, was uh, is OK. -ish. I run locally, so it's uh, 0.3 milliseconds for P99, which is fine. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is just kill the process, restart it with the setting of running with SSD enabled. And I would like to repeat the same experiment, uh, running the same memtier benchmark again. But this time, we have this tier storage um, that kind of, uh, and Dragonfly uh, transparently offloads its in-memory data onto the storage, and we can see how it looks like uh, from the perspective of uh, you know, MemTier benchmark and also how it affects the memory usage. So we can see that the uh, throughput is getting lower, um, but it's still pretty good. It's uh, around uh, 200,000 queries per second. Again, it's a laptop uh, and very average SSD disk. Um, the latency is, again, average latency is uh, 0.2 millisecond so far. And let's see what happens with our memory usage. So here we can see it dropped to zero because I started my process from fresh. And it goes up right now. Um, and we'll soon see uh, where it stops. So we are at 57% uh, of our uh, test. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we have uh, 14 million of entries so far. So we are progressing very nicely. And you can see that the memory is not going up, almost. Like now, now it's going to be okay, 600 megabytes compared to more than 21 gigabyte before. So uh, it's not over yet, but uh, you can already see huge difference in memory usage for both settings. Uh, let's get back to the load test. Um, yeah, we can see that the average throughput right now went down to uh, 170 queries per second. Still pretty good. The latency uh, is also very good. Uh, so um, we'll see. OK, we're almost there in terms of the load test. Yep, we finished. So the overall query uh, of throughput was 175 in this case. P99, yes, it went up. Uh, it was uh, 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 0.34. Now it's twice bigger but still sub millisecond latency on a very weak hardware. Uh, and let's see the memory usage. It's one gigabyte of used memory. Um, let's just check memory stats again. Uh, can you see it? I hope you can. It's a one gigabyte of RSS memory right now. So the whole process takes um, 20 times less memory. And you get the same um, look and feel experience like with a regular uh, you know, uh, in-memory store. So I think this feature is going to be very much disruptive. Um, uh, people will be able to manage um, you know, in memory stores and get very high throughput with much less memory, with much more cost-efficient uh, hardware configurations. Uh, of course, the, their 
mileage will be different. Sometimes it will be several times uh, more efficient. Sometimes it will be 10 times more efficient. Really depends also on the, the value size, etc. Uh, but uh, so far, it looks super exciting to us. We are super um, confident that uh, this feature will be very, uh, very much useful to lots of people using memory stores. Um, just one final caveat. Uh, we're currently uh, developing this feature only for strings. Uh, it's a start, and later, maybe next year, we'll expand to more data structures that where it is. So that's on my side. Thanks, Roman. And again, if people have any feedback for you on this, do you want it on GitHub issues, or would you want it on Discord, or how would you like people to contact you about the use of this feature or feedback? I mean, right now it's uh, purely in development mode. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not yet ready for production at, at all. So I'm just demoing. It's like yeah. you know, <laughs> where they have just... a feedback on, on GitHub issues or Discord on the use of it for strings. In particular. Yeah, they can just try it, and I do not suggest to put it on into prod, but they can it's not just, production ready people. Yeah, try it to on their like staging environment or just yeah. try it on their uh, workloads and to see if it works and. Uh, you know, yeah, just open an issue if you see anything weird and just in general respond on Discord if you're excited about this feature and if you want this feature uh, to be released soon. Perfect. Thank you, Roman. I appreciate it. So, folks, thank you very much today for taking part in, in today's office hours. Uh, if you have any other questions or want to join us, you can join us on Discord. If you click on the QR code, it brings you directly into our Discord channel. We look forward to hearing more from you and I look forward to having more guests um presenters on our office hours going forward so thank you once again fabiano for joining us uh i really appreciate you and hope you get to have a lovely vacation um but thank you very much folks and i will see you all next month don't forget it's the second tuesday of every month 4 p.m uk time um 5 p.m gmt plus one and we'll see you all then so take care folks bye-bye